In this video, you're going to learn how to predict runoff with the unit hydrograph method. What we're going to do, as you can see in this slide that I've just put up, is uh, calculate the runoff response to a, a typhoon that just came in off the west coast of uh, British Columbia. There's a three storms. We're going to look at the third storm. And in that storm, there are um, four precipitation uh, intervals. So we, for each hour, over four hours, we recorded a precipitation rate. And in this certain watershed in the west coast of uh, British Columbia, outside of Victoria, we know how that hydrograph responds, how that watershed responds. So the two things that we know that we, we're going to use to solve this problem are the precipitation input, which you can see here, there's these four precipitation signals. And we know um, this unit hydrograph that we've been describing in class. And the best way that I've ever thought to describe the unit hydrograph is as a template of the watershed response. So I'm going to show you what that template means uh, as we solve this video. So the two input things, uh, two input data that we have are the precipitation and this unit hydrograph. The other piece of information that was in the problem that was uh, I just showed before was that the abstraction rate of the watershed is uh, 0.03 inches per hour. So what we have to do first is subtract the abstraction rate from our um, total precipitation input. And so then we have a lower overall input of what's called excess precipitation. And this excess precipitation is what I have quantified along the top here. So if we're moving now over to this table, what we have is we're going to solve this problem in using this uh, table. And this table has um, a number of columns. The first column is the, the time in, in hours. So we're moving through um, during and after this storm, which the, the precipitation input was only four hours, so we're moving um, uh, and trying to predict the runoff um, during and after this storm event. And the second column is this um, a unit hydrograph. And our unit hydrograph is um, in units of cubic feet per inch of rain. So if we have a, a single inch of rain, this is the response of this watershed in stream flow um, in this watershed. So for each of the precipitation input signals, we um, uh, linearly uh, assume that each unit hydrograph response is, is linear and then sum these um, through time. So that's what I'm going to do for first. So as I've said, to recap, I've removed um, the abstraction from the precipitation input for to now have this excess precipitation. And we're going to first solve uh, this uh, first column here. So here for um, P is equal to 1, which is right here, we have a precipitation input uh, of 0 0.2 uh, inches. And we have our hydrograph response in cubic feet per cubic feet per second uh, per inch. And so all we have to do is multiply our precipitation input, uh, multiply by our unit hydrograph to derive this column. And so we have um, 0, 2, 20, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0. So this is the, the, the first part of our runoff response. So we can think of that as our, we'll make a, a series of smaller graphs over here. So we have, um, this is our P1 multiplied by our unit hydrograph. So this is our unit hydrograph here. And we have um, a hydrograph there. This is at Q in, again, cubic feet per second through time. So that's our first uh, hydrograph that we've calculated in this table here. Okay, so now for uh, 
P2, this is the next time step on this graph here, I have moved this template. So this is actually a, a movable piece here, and I've moved our unit hydrograph, which again is our template of watershed response. I've moved it down one time step, and then I have multiplied 0.7 multiplied by this unit hydrograph to derive this column here. You can see it's shifted down, uh, and that's now our P2 calculation. So I'll make another um, graph over here. Here's our P2 times our unit hydrograph. All right, so now I have um, solved for the hydrograph response in P3 and P4 columns. And you can see that each of these columns is offset as I've moved down and offset the unit hydrograph template. And then I've just summed across for our total runoff of Q in um, cubic feet per second. So here we have 0, 2, 27, and 122. And just conceptually then, I've also made two more of these um, graphs for um, time step uh, three and time step four, and then summed these to have our total runoff through time. And so now you're able to predict runoff only knowing the precipitation coming into a watershed and how that watershed responds with the unit hydrograph method.